Welcome back, everybody. We have now our eighth and final speaker of this year's 2023 Dallas Gate Conference. Speaking of people who don't seem affected by the limits of time, we have our next speaker, a wayfarer of vast capacity, a 16th generation Wudong San Feng Pai disciple and student of Yuan Shu Gong. David is one of those people, at least historically, that makes no effort to be found, no advertising, a very limited, little online footprint, yet somehow you can't miss him within the community. Living on the West Coast for a year, I came across several students of his, and they had several things in common. First, they all love good tea and have a stash on them at all times. Second, they're obviously well taught in their Gong Fu. And third, they're really fascinating people to talk to, kind of jacks of all trades. This group was clearly not just learning Wudong martial arts, but also Chinese medicine in an authentic way. In stark contrast to a lot of schools who say they're teaching medicine and, well. <laughs> so in addition to his Gong Fu training on Wudong, David Wei also spent years mastering Tui Na, sometimes translated as Chinese medical massage, but I'll let him say more as he discusses the five hands of classical Chinese acupressure. David? Wow, rookie mistake, rookie mistake. Here I am talking and muted. <laughs> Sam, if I may say, you are an amazing introducer. That is the, the most impressive introducing that I've ever seen intro done. Very, very well done. So those of you that want to participate with me today, I would like to invite you to turn on your cameras. That way I can see you and it feels like we have a chi exchange. There we go. Yeah, G. Yeah, so yeah, Joan. Yeah, Rosie. Yeah, Dia. Look at you. Wow. All right. Good. Hey, Robert, you just talked. Wow. All right. So, guys, thank you for having me. Before I get into anything, please allow me to extend my gratitude and appreciation to Sam and my uncle uh, for hosting this event and for inviting me to speak. I feel very honored to be here, I feel very privileged to share my perspective. So, thank you. For having me on and uh, those of you that are here to hear me talk thank you too okay uh we can go ahead and get started i'm talking about the five hands of tui na massage those of you that are familiar with tui na uh i don't need to tell you much about it but those of you that don't know what tui na is uh, literally translates to brush and grab tui means brush na means grab and similar to feng shui, it right? just means wind and water, right? And so tui na just means brush and grab. However, these are the terms we use to describe massage and specifically acupressure massage. And so this idea of touch as therapy, touch as medicine is very human. Uh, imagine you have a headache. What are you gonna do? You're probably gonna rub your head or polish your temples. Imagine you have a bellyache. What are you going to do? You're probably going to brace your belly, and maybe even rub or polish your navel, right? Consider wherever you have pain, it's very common to touch it and hold it, right? So touch as therapy is very common, very natural. Uh, Tui Na is just a systemized method of using touch as therapy, okay? And so we're gonna get into these hand methods and we're gonna get into how they're used and how they're applied. But before we do any massage technique, please allow me to show you how to take care of your tools. Really important conversation of massage is taking care of our hands because the average massage therapist quits within two to three years, right? Because of injuries, yeah. Uh, so if you're a software engineer, you need to know how to maintain your computers, reboots and whatnot. And if you're a carpenter, you need to know how to sharpen your tools and keep a hammer and nails. You need to know how to work your tools. So if you're a body worker, a massage therapist, you need to know how to work your tools. So really quick to nourish our hands, this will be the participatory aspect of the sharing. You guys get to do what I do. Okay. So in the conversation of hands, hands actually start from your neck and shoulder. Consider every tendon, muscle, ligament, blood vessel, capillary, vein, nerve, anything in your hand stems from your neck and shoulder. So in the conversation of taking care of your hands, first thing we're going to do is take care of our neck and shoulder. OK, 
Okay. And so we have three generic movements called yes, no, and maybe. They're going to be just like they sound. So the first one is yes. What do you think it looks like? What's the yes movement? Yeah, Patty. Whoa, yeah. Yes, Sam. This is that amazing Kung Fu teaching you were talking about, right, Sam? This is that good stuff that I teach, right? So this is a yes movement. Next is the no movement. What do you think it looks like? I'm going to put you on the spot. Robert, you're a scholar. What does no look like? Yeah, look at that. You guys know all this stuff already. G's already doing it too. Extra credit for this one. You can turn your eyes too. Thank you, Andy, for turning on your computer. I want to watch you practice also. Okay, so we have an up, down. That's a yes. We have a side to side. That's a no. And we have a kind of left, right, ear to shoulder. And that's the maybe. Good. So come on, G, why'd you stop? There you go. Okay. So these are generic movements for the neck. Of course, they're more advanced, more uh, involved, but by and large, these three movements are pretty much available to all of us. Now, really quick, after we move something, it's a good idea to massage something, right? Imagine if you got a massage every time you did some work. Right? So we're going to do our bodies that way. We just did some work with the neck, so now we're going to massage the neck. We have two types of massage, a yin and a yang. It's a polish and a pat, so go ahead and polish your neck. You can get it from the sides, you can get it from the front. You want to get your neck and everything that connects to your neck. So also your clavicle, into your chest, into your upper shoulder, back shoulder, anything that's your neck and connected to your neck. You want to polish it. And polish it until it's warm yeah rosie get in there get in there both hands why not yeah. okay good now after you feel some warmth build in your hands you know all this rubbing generates friction and friction generates heat so you rub 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 it will get warm now when you feel that heat start to build in your hand now you want to disperse that heat with a little pat 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 wonderful work so we are moving right along through our hand maintenance material and this is critical before we start our five hands of tway na practice so hand maintenance just to review we got people still coming in late hand maintenance starts in the neck and shoulders so we just did our neck movements now we're going to do our shoulder movements okay shoulder again very generic we have up down we have front back and we have round and round how many of you have poppy crunchy clickies? Yvonne, you got crunchy shoulders? We all do, right? G, you got them too, right? So when you roll these shoulders, the goal is not to be poppy crunchy clicky, the goal is to be smooth. Okay, so find a range where there's no pops, there's no clicks. Okay, you want to circle one way, circle the other way. Good. And because this is a Taoist wellness community and medicinal community, Go ahead, breathe with it too, right? There you go, now it's magical, now it's magical. Yeah, Rosie, that's my humor, okay, that's my humor. All right, so after you've up, down, front, back, round, and round, you also have kind of alternating rounds, right? But this is more chest, back, and waist too, right? But still in the conversation of shoulder. Now, after having moved the shoulder, we're breezing through this, guys. After having moved the shoulder, we what? Massage, good. And remember, there's two types of massage, a soft and a hard. So we're gonna do that soft first, but follow me because I wanna do it in a very special way. I wanna use my right hand on my left shoulder. Right, it's like pledge allegiance to Qigong or something, right? Yeah, Rosie, just like that. Okay, now polish on the chest. Good, be a good Andy. Oh, Andy has a partner. You got two people on that camera. Okay, all right. So we're gonna polish here in the front and I'm gonna support my elbow. That way I can get the top of my shoulder and maybe even the back too, right? Because again, same way I got my neck and everything connected to it, I wanna get my shoulder and everything connected to it. So I get the front, I get the top, I get the back, I get the outside. I can even get the underside in my armpit, right? Yeah, good, 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 good. Okay? Also works in the shower, all right? Now, after you get all these areas warm, again, this is my right hand on my left shoulder, now I want to pat it out. I'm going to disperse all that heat that I just generated, right? So pat, 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 pat. Let's pat out the front. Kind of pull your head to the side so you get this area nice and taut. Go ahead and pat that out. It should feel nice. 
Good. Support your elbow again. The top of your shoulder, back of your shoulder, outside of your shoulder, and underside as well. Careful on your armpit. You can get your ribs. You can get your lats. You can get your underarm. Now, those of you that followed directions, that was your right hand on your left side. Here's what I want you to do now. Compare and contrast. What's the feeling of the side that just got massaged? What's the side that didn't? Raise your hand if you feel the difference. Ah, audience participation. Good job, good job, good job. All right, this is a live crowd, okay. So you feel the difference, right? One feels alive, feels stimulated. There's circulation happening. There's alertness. There's awareness, proprioception. And then the other side still feels just a little bit bland and dull, right? So let's go ahead and make them match, all right? So now left hand on my right side. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna polish, 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 rub, rub, rub. Be specific, get all through your clavicle, right? Get all through your chest. Even if you don't know Chinese medicine, know that you're stimulating all these points and all these lines, right? So just get it all, right? Just carpet bomb it, okay? And then you can also support the elbow. That way you get the top of your shoulder, back of your shoulder, and outside. Good, we wanna get all these areas warm, okay? So now rub on your armpits too. Good, 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 good. Good, so now that you've polished, you feel a little bit of warmth, now we wanna pat it out. All of those same areas, right? Pat the chest, pat the shoulder, support yourself, so you can pat yourself on the back. You guys are doing a great job, such a good job. All right, get the outside and get the underside. Good. Wonderful, when you're all done. How many of you find this pleasurable? Yeah, wow, 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 hey, 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 shoulders, wow. Okay, so I told you it's easy stuff. And we've done neck, shoulders now, all in the conversation of hand maintenance. We haven't even gotten to our hands yet. How many of you already have buzzy, tingly hands? Wow. Sam, see, it's good stuff. Thank you for introducing me. Okay, so we've done our neck, we've done our shoulder. Now we're gonna move on to our elbows, wrists, and fingers, or as my teacher would say, root, trunk, branch, stem, leaf, okay? So now we're at our elbows. Elbows are very generic. They just open and close. So we'll do that. We'll just open and close. Now, how many of you, this is a Taoist group. We're mystical. We're esoteric. We're a cult. How many of you know about mantra? Oh, Robert, you like my humor? You guys know mantra? Yeah, power words or phrases, tones, right? So this move has a mantra, okay? It's a two syllable mantra. It's intended to empower you and make you strong and mighty. Okay, it's two syllables. Say it with me, hi. I wanna see your mouth move, hi. Yeah, so you got it, hi. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Good, now do it fast. Hi, yeah. Hi, yeah. <laughs> That's my humor, that's your elbow joke. Okay, good, hi-ya, 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 you guys are empowered now. Okay, so now after you move your elbow, you massage your elbow. Rosie, you think that's funny, great. Okay, so rub, 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 rub. Remember there's a soft and a hard, right? So we're gonna softly polish the soft stuff and we're gonna polish until it's warm. Note you have a soft inside, you have a hard outside, you have a thumb side and a pinky side. You have above and below, get it all, because it's all connected to elbow. Okay, and then after you polish it, make it warm, pat, 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 make it red, right? Pretend you want to give blood, pretend you want to do heroin, pat it all out, and then now compare and contrast, what does one elbow feel like relative to the other? What does one hand feel like relative to the other? What does it feel like to be on and activated and stimulated versus passive? Can you guys feel the difference? Good, feels good too, right? Yeah, Yvonne, yeah, hands up, hallelujah, all right. Okay, now, uh, there's, oh, thank you. Yeah, actually typing it in, right? So now it's written, documented proof, this stuff works, right? Okay, so now, other elbow, polish, 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 rub, rub, rub. Okay, get it warm, okay? Ideally, you would do this until you generate enough friction that it literally gets hot. And Taoism is scientific method, right? So this is scalable, uh, peer reviewable, 
repeatable, testable, verifiable, right? So I want to rub so much that it gets objectively warm. So much so my friend can come and touch my elbow and be like, wow, does your elbow have a fever? Why is your elbow so hot, right? So this could be objectively warm. So rub, 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 rub till it literally heats up. And then when you feel that heat building your palm, that's when you disperse the heat and pat, pat, pat. Now specific to the elbow and forearm, patting is nice and that's gonna be good for the skin and the blood, but you can also knock. And this is gonna be good for the bone and muscle too, okay? Good. Oh, I love your cameras on. I love watching you guys practice. Very, very good. Thank you guys so much for participating. When you're all done, feel good? Yeah. Those of you that deal with tendonitis, arthritis, rheumatism, better than Advil? Better than aspirin? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, good. So we've done root, we've done trunk, we've done branch. Now we're just gonna do stem and leaf, right? And so for this, we're gonna tune in Tokyo and we're gonna flare all the fingers rotating in and out. And try to fan and try to get some fine motor articulation. There you go. Not bad. And then try to do open, close, open, close. Let's do 50 of these real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There you go. Good. All the way open so much the fingertips turn red. All the way closed so much the knuckles turn pale. Good. There you go. Some of you are just like sprinkling seasonings. Come on. Open and close. Open and close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There you go. When you're done, what does fatigue feel like? Does it burn, pulse, ache, throb, radiate, pinch? Do you feel it in your hand? Do you feel it in your forearm? Do you feel it in your shoulder? Note your feeling. This is a body intelligence exercise, okay? So after you've done your hands and fingers, now we're gonna clap. High, low, high, low, high, low. Crisscross, apple cross. Back of the hand, you've been naughty. Webs too, why not? When you're done. How many of you have buzzy, tingly hands? What does that buzzy, tingly mean? Interactive part, what does that mean? I got buzzy, tingly hands, what does that mean? Andy? I guess you guys are muted. You can't talk. I'm talking. Ha ha. Yeah, type it in. Dia doesn't know. Nice question mark from Dia. What is this feeling? What is this feeling? Generic answer, life. You're alive. <laughs> you have to hear your hand. Ha, ah, life. Okay. Generic answer, residual sensory stimulus. Generic answer, chi. I can feel the chi. Generic answer, blood. Circulation. Generic answer. Spiritual answer. What you're feeling is transformation. Spiritual answer, what you're feeling is change. Scientific answer, every day you have new blood, every week you have new skin, every year you have new bone tissue organ. So you're not a thing, you're a process, constantly evolving, right? And so that buzzy, tingly sensation, that's you transforming. How great to witness, how fortunate to participate. What a wonderful experience, right? And so now in the conversation of our five hands, we now have activated hands. Oh, look at Joan taking notes, I love it. Right? And so we now have activated hands, so let's use these with the five flavors, okay? How are we doing on time? Sam, we doing good? Good, all right. So. Five flavors, this is what we're here for, Twe Na's five hands, okay? The first hand of Twe Na is Twe. Twe, T-U-I, right, would be the spelling. And Twe means to brush, specifically brushing 
at the level of the skin. And there's a song that goes here too. I told my community I'd probably be singing with me today. There's a song that goes with this. It's a very classic Taoist song. Okay, we sang it in the temples. Okay, it goes, tui, 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 tui. Come on, Patty, sing it with me. I can see your mouth moves. Tui, 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 tui. There you go. G, you know this song. Come on. Oh, thank you, Andy. There you and you're brushing at the same time. That's exactly how it's supposed to be done. So brush yourself at the level of the skin and sing. You want to brush your brows. You want to brush your forehead. You want to brush your hair back. You want to brush behind the ear. You want to brush down your neck and chinny chin chin. Brush down your torso. Brush down your arm. All of it is brush. And all of it is done at the level of skin. This is the first technique called tway. Now, if you want to be fancy, you don't call it tway. You call it lymphatic drainage massage and you charge $200 an hour. Yeah, Yvonne, you make money, right? You want to be fancy, you put a little bit of Himalayan pink salt in your hand and you do a little uh, sea salt exfoliation. It's still the same technique, but now you charge $500 at the spa. It's just brush. It's all twain, right? Dia, you like my humor. Okay, good. So this is twain. The function here, okay? Brushing at the level of skin, right? All joking aside, I am diagnosing. As I brush, I'm feeling. What's the temperature? What's the texture? Where's the tension? I wanna feel for those things, right? Are we tight? Are we knotted? Are we loose? I can touch and check in with that. The other thing that touch does, assuming I'm working with a partner now, is that first layer of brushing, this helps me establish rapport. This helps the person establish trust. How many of you have had a massage and the therapist just goes straight to the elbow? No foreplay, no warm, right? You're going to get tense. You're going to tighten up. And so by going in with the skin, brushing of the skin, this is a gentle way to introduce touch, gentle way to diagnose, gentle way to build and establish trust and rapport with your client. Okay. And in terms of function, brushing, what do we do? If I brush enough, that's friction. Friction makes heat. Heat makes expansion. Right? Expansion allows for movement. So if I brush enough, what am I doing? Creating circulation. There's gonna be a theme for that. Okay. It's creating circulation. Okay. So let's try it out. Tway, 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 tway. Whatever hurts. Tway, 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 tway. Whatever feels good. Tway, 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 tway. Above your tender spot. Below your tender spot. Through your tender spot. Tway, 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 tway. Short, fast, rapid, stimulating brushes. Long, slow, sedating brushes. All of it is tway, all of it is done at the level of your skin, okay? Good, that's first technique. We got four more to go and a half hour left. I think we can do it. Okay, so next technique is na. First technique is tway for the skin. Second technique is na for the muscle, okay? So this technique also has a song. If you know it, sing along. Na, 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 na. Good. Na means to grab, right? And specifically, grabbing the meat. And specifically, grabbing the meat and pulling it off the bone, much like taking the meat off of your turkey leg. Okay, I'm going to grab the meat, grab as much real estate as you can and pull it. Some people do this technique like, ooh, you're dirty, ooh, right, ooh, that won't feel good, 
Okay, get as much of their meat in your hand as possible and grab it, squeeze it. Okay, and then you can kind of work your way down. So here I squeeze here, walk an inch, squeeze here, walk an inch, squeeze here, walk an inch, right? And then this is the squeeze technique done at the level of muscle. Okay, so anywhere you have meat, grab it, pinch it, squeeze it. Some places have more meat than others. Right? Grab it, pinch it, squeeze it, pull it off the bone. This is your na technique. Okay, consider the function here. Okay, the na is a squeeze and release. This is going to be great for relieving muscular tension. Right, you have a tender knot, you have a tender spot, squeeze it, knead it, rub it, polish it. Right? This is gonna be a great way to uh, deal with pain and tenderness in your muscles, right? But on the other end, what is this doing? Squeeze, release, squeeze, release, squeeze, release. Consider you just made another pump, right? And that pump's gonna do what? Move blood, move lymph, move synovial, and promote healthy circulation, okay? So we have the twe for the skin. We have the na for the muscle. Both of them are for circulation. Okay, good. So wherever hurts, na, 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 na. Good. Now here I am on camera, just grabbing my arms because that's what's available. But you want to grab your leg, you want to grab your knee, you want to grab your foot. Everything's fair game. You got a buddy next to you, you want to grab them. Everything's fair game. Okay, just get a handful of meat and squeeze it. And get consent. There you go. Good. Okay. So that is your na technique. Now you'll notice in the song, we do the kind of jiggle, jostle, shake. And don't be afraid to grab meat and jiggle it, right? The reason why is because if you can take a limb and shake it, and if they're loose and limber, that means they're very relaxed. So being able to shake the meat, shake the flesh on the bone, that shows a quality of relaxation. Because if you're tense and tight, there's no jiggle to your jangle, right? Too stiff. And so the shaking, one, it's a way to demonstrate looseness. Two, it's a way to establish looseness and relaxation. Okay, so don't be afraid of a little jiggle. Okay, so here we are moving well into our curriculum. We have two of our five techniques done. We have brushing, we have grabbing, right? Skin and muscle. Our third technique is on. Tway na on. And this on technique is to press, but specifically pressing to the bone, okay? So note the pattern here. We're going skin, muscle, now bone. It's as if we've gone in layer by layer, okay? Now on technique means to press, okay? So I can use my fingers. I can use my thumb. I can use the heel of my palm. I can use my wrist, forearm, elbow. I can use my forehead, right? Anything that I'm using to press and specifically press down to the bone. This is gonna be your on technique, okay? Now, some of you are ready to sing. Some of you got your karaoke clothes on. The song here is Beethoven's Fifth. On, 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 on. On, 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 right? These are very traditional Taoist songs. Which came first, the Twena song or Beethoven? Okay, so this is Twena music, okay? So you can use the song as you press on these points, okay? So on, 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 okay? So you wanna do fancy on technique? Do an hour of it, just pressing and walking, and then call it shiatsu. All this grabbing technique, call it cross fiber stim, or call it roll thing. And you can charge big, big money for your twin on practice. 
Okay, so we have brush, we have grab, we have press. Pressing, right? I want you to press along lines. Consider you could also brush along a line, you could squeeze along a line. Now I want you to press along a line. And again, you don't have to know your meridians, but it's clear to see that when I have a neutral arm out, my thumb connects to my shoulder. Clear as day to see. And that's an easy line to work. When my arm is out neutral, my pinky aligns with my armpit. Clear as day to see. We don't have to study any meridians, right? So when you're looking for lines, you just brush along natural lines in your body. You just squeeze along natural lines in your body. You just press along natural lines in your body. Fair enough? Who's finding this interesting so far? Two people, not bad. Touching lives, touching lives. Okay, good. So we have three of our hand techniques in now. We have brushing for the skin. We have grabbing for the muscle. We have pressing for the bone. Our next technique is more. Tue na an more. okay? And more means to polish, right? Polish. Now, here's a trick question, okay? First technique for the skin, second technique for the muscle, third technique for the bone. What's this technique for? Interaction, interaction, keeping you on your toes. I'm a Zoom professional here. Go ahead and type it in the chat. You guys are muted. It's for the feet, the fluids. Ah, I like that answer, it's for the fluids. Anybody else have an answer? It's for the, ooh, marrow. Ooh, you guys are Taoist. Okay. Give me one more answer. Give me one more wrong answer and I'll give you the right one. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, aha, okay. How about this? I'll just tell you the answer. Okay, so it's actually a trick question because the more technique works its way back out. Consider these three techniques worked their way in, skin to muscle to bone. The polishing technique does them all, but does it in reverse to leave, okay? So follow me, all right? So I'm gonna polish. This is my polishing technique, all right? Go ahead and polish. Now polish, but with the heel. And feel that this can go quite deep, right? And you might even be able to feel your bone like polish all the way down to your bone, right? But then use the pads of your fingers, use your fingerprints and then polish with that. And feel that that's gonna be very surface. That's on the skin, right? And now try the ball of your head in between and get that that's kind of the middle, right? That's kind of your flesh, that's your musculature, right? So it's still the same polish, but if I use my heel, that's for the bone. If I use the ball, that's for the muscle. If I use my fingerprints, that's for the skin. And so this is special in that I've worked my way in skin, muscle, bone, and I work my way out bone, muscle, skin. Because my mom, my first Dallas teacher, she taught me if I open something, I should close it. Right? And so if I open up my clinic, if I open up my client and go in layer by layer, skin, muscle, bone, I don't want to just leave them there all the way, right? I want to close them back up, right? So I brush for the skin, I grab for the muscle, I press for the bone, and then I polish the bone, I polish the muscle, I polish the skin, and I work my way back out. Science, yin-yang, you guys get it? Cool? All right, good. All right, so fifth and final technique. Oh! I didn't tell you the song. Somebody caught me. Somebody wanted to sing. What's the song? It's row, row, row your boat. More, 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 Wow, oh my God, guys, would you believe my hour is nearly over? I'm supposed to be answering questions now. More, 
Good question. What's the difference between polishing and brushing? Very good question. Okay, so the Tway technique, brushing, surface, specifically for the surface and generally in straight lines. More the polishing, circular, and has the depth. So if there's a distinction between the two techniques of brushing and polishing, it would be that. Right. And the brushing, this is kind of more of a entry level, whereas the polishing, this kind of more has the quality of soothing and closing. And so there's also that distinction, too. Okay. So final technique, fifth and final technique. What's for dessert? Pie. Tue na an mo. Pie. Pie is our fifth and final technique. Who knows what pie means? Apple, cherry, banana, pecan. Pie means to slap. Okay? And so rhythmic percussion is our final method. So go ahead and pat, 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 pat. Pat along your chest, pat along your arms. Pat along your thighs. If you have something that hurts, pat it. If you have something that hurts, pat above it. If you have something that hurts, pat below it. If you have something that hurts, pat through it. Pat, 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 pat. When you're done, big stimulus from that one, right? Get really buzzy, tingly, right? The song there, Mary Had a Little Lamb. Pie, 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 pie. Bye. Good. So guys, there you have your five hand methods. We did a little bit of hand maintenance, to kind of introduce you to body work and self-care. And then we further went into the five hand techniques. Now, uh, I present these in a way that you can do them to yourself. However, feel free to do them on your buddy too, right? We often joke about how brushing grabbing, pressing, and polishing, patting, feel great on your friend too, right? And we often joke about how that's brushing, right? That's pressing, right? That's squeezing, right? That's slapping, right? They, they all translate, right? So, now, it gets really, really fancy when you combine the techniques, right? So, yes, I can brush. Yes, I can grab. What if I brush and grab? Yes, I can grab. Yes, I can polish. What if I grab and polish? Right? Yes, I can brush. Yes, I can tap. What if I brush and pat, right? You can combine the techniques. And relative to surface area, right? So if I'm working these big, broad surface areas, I can use a big, broad tool like my hand. But if I'm using a smaller area, then I'm gonna use a smaller tool. So I could still brush, I could still grab, I could still press. I can still polish, I can still pat, right? So relative to what you're doing, what part of the body you're doing, who you're treating, right? What their constitution is, what their condition is, these five hands have a capacity to meet the needs of all your clients, right? Because typically massage is taught as a routine. First you do this, then you do that, right? Step by step by step, right? However, this is not a routine. This is a toolbox. This is a toolbox that you can use to meet whatever circumstance you're dealing with, okay? So five hands. And not only did you get the five hands, you got extra credit, you got hand maintenance too. Do I wanna leave time for questions and answers? Sam? Yeah, can that's you awesome. clarify how Reiki comes into play here? It doesn't. 
If it was a Reiki conversation, I'd call it Reiki conversation. But it's a Tway Not conversation. There's no Reiki here. Ho, oh, Andy, you thought that was funny. Uh, Reiki is Reiki. Ask them. I'm a level three Reiki guy. I did get that transmission. That's a Tibetan lineage. However, um, it's a bit too energy. It's a bit too woo-woo. And I work in a clinic. And in clinic, uh, people want tangible results. I'm a martial artist. And in martial arts, people want tangible results. And Reiki, it's hit or miss, very subjective experience. And so uh, not tangible enough for me. And so in that regard, with regards to my martial and clinical experience, uh, I don't dabble too much in Reiki. So if you want to know about Reiki, ask them. Questions? Look at Jeff still rubbing him titties. Good job. Yay. David, we can, um, usually I'll, I'll read some things from the chat box to, to keep, yeah, to keep us, um, so you don't have to just watch it the whole time. Okay. Uh, I don't know if we answered if, uh, Dia's question, if Pi is suggested more for blockage. One more time. Uh, Dia was asking if Pi is suggested more for a blockage. Um, I'm careful with the word more, but Pi can absolutely be used for blockage, 100%. I mean, if I have a dirty piece of fabric and I hit that dirty piece of fabric, all the caca, all the obstructions, all the dirt, all the stuff is gonna come out, right? And so uh, slapping and patting is 100% a detoxification, a clearing, a tonification. Uh, yes, it can be used to detox and clear blockages. One more time. Ooh, we got good questions coming in. Yeah, yeah, we have got great questions. Um, Therese is asking if you can overdo it. Yeah, I was just talking about that with my partners earlier. Uh, you can have what's called uh, touch overload. This is more common with beginners. This is more common in groups where everyone's kind of learning on each other. And so, you know, having skillful touch on your body can be nice and therapeutic, but having learning or experimental touch on your body it takes a toll. And if you're doing it all day with many, many people, it is common to have touch overload. And so uh, if you're practicing with others, yeah, be mindful of that. Take breaks, drink water, stretch, ground yourself, you know, take care of yourself. Uh, if you're practicing on your own, it's a little harder to overdo it. Totally. That brings us to our next question. Um, and it is, um, yeah, uh, wondering about how to touch others to not absorb an illness. I like touching people. So great question. How do you touch someone and not get an illness? Uh, don't care about their illness. And I may sound like a jerk for saying this, okay? So there is a doctor who knows the protocol. There is a healer that can modify and tailor the protocol per case. And then there is a shaman who just doesn't care what you're going through. I prescribe to the shaman. Reason why, a good healer has empathy, but do they not? A good healer can put themselves in your shoes and experience your experience and in a sense kind of heal you in that way, right? Because they're relating and they can put, put themselves in your experience and they can help pull you out, right? So there's a very empathy thing. And pardon my grammar, right? But empathy is big amongst healers. And my wife has this amazing healer, amazing empath, right? Uh, but then she treats somebody with back pain that night she has back pain. She treats somebody with knee pain. That night she'll have knee pain. It's almost like you take on the caca of your clients uh, using very uh, clinical terminology here, the caca of your clients. And so this is what we're speaking to, right? In the, in the question, right? When you touch people, you take on their caca, right? And so this is because you care too much. This is because you're too empathetic. Dare I say this, when you come to me for a session, I don't care what you're going through. I'm practicing Tai Chi. 
you are in my way. And so if I'm into your story and now I'm at impact of you, I don't want to care about your story. You come and get a part of my story. Now you're at impact of me. Yvonne, you get that aha moment. I can see the, I can see the light bulb go off. Eureka, right? And so I don't care about your story. Matter of fact, I don't even want to hear your story because I don't want to reinforce your BS. You come to me because I'm healthy and bright and you want to be healthy and bright. So you're going to be with me while I'm healthy and bright. Now you're going to leave healthy and bright. At, at least that's how my clinic works. And I got 25 years experience. And so when I teach at the universities and that question inevitably comes up amongst healers, how do I protect myself? Uh, you care too much, <laughs> care less. A parallel story, okay, parallel story, a martial story, because I am a martial artist too. There is a crane master, story of a powerful Northern crane master, but he doesn't fight, he just poses. You just got in the way of his pose, right? I'm not, I'm not hitting you, I'm brushing my hair back. I'm too busy looking good. You just got in the way of my elbow. Right? So I, I'm not fighting you. I look good. So I'm not healing you. I'm doing Tai Chi. You're just in my way. So pay me for taking up my space. Did that answer land? Yeah. Pardon me if I over answered. Good. Next question. Give it to me. All right. Olivia wants to know what movement you would use for cooling or condensing chi. What movement I would use for cooling or condensing. Cooling and condensing for myself or for others. Uh, we'd have to have Olivia answer that. Um, now, so this again is going to be this is gonna be case by case because relative to condition, relative to circumstance, relative to practitioner, relative to receiver. You know, uh, it's gonna be more intention than technique or method. I would say that. It's gonna be more your intention than technique or method in terms of cooling or condensing. Uh, reason why, okay, is because for example, there's this movement. There's this one movement. But if I'm a healer, I'm going to use this to regulate my breath, regulate my heart rate, regulate my chi, right? If I'm healing others, I'm going to use this exact same movement to massage. Same movement. But relative to my function, I'm going to use it different. If I'm a martial artist, I'm going to use this to block and strike. Same movement. Right. And so when I do this one movement, it's not about cooling or condensing, right? It's about the intention of how I use it and how I'm applying it, but same movement. And so to answer the question of what do I do to cool or condense, do something with the intention of cooling or condensing. And that'll get you a result. Because it's less about the movement, more about the application. Did that land? Yeah, yeah, Gregory likes that one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, that reminds me of um, I mean, different schools treated different ways. And, and tell me if yours is slightly different, but when I was learning Twain now, they taught uh if you have trapped heat in the body, inflammation is usually from stuckness. It's not like you have too much good jun chi in the body that's like building up some sort of pathological heat. It's it's something pathogenic that's a block and some of the same things that are heating you up doing these exercises that we just did. Yeah. can potentially move heat out of the body yeah, by creating sure. flow as yeah. well. Yeah, they can absolutely generate, uh, or excuse me, move heat out. They can absolutely generate heat and bring it in too. So again, same movement. It's your intention and the application. Thank you, Sam. I think we have um, one more. This isn't quite a question, but I think we could turn it into one um, because it's a little nuanced. 
Uh, so Amy mentioned that intention involves caring. Uh, and, you know, in her words, she says caring less makes a lot of sense. But in your in your mind, does intention always uh, uh, need that empathic sense of caring? Case by case. When it comes to nuanced stuff like this, I dare not give a black and white answer. So case by case. Let's see, just a comment that more is a lot like the pre-game stimulating sports massage technique, but better. Uh-oh. Thank you, Dan Reed. And Dan Reed, are we friends? On social media, I think I thought you were the Dan Reed, the author, and then you're not the Dan. Yeah. Okay. More questions, guys? So I can pretend to be smart. She is she. Profound. Good job, Olivia. Uh, let's see. I have the experience personally. Every time I treat someone, oh, that's the same thing. All right. Well, uh, if no more questions, you can also tell me how amazing I am. I'll take that. David, thank you for being here. Uh, this is a great way to wrap up our conference with uh, with plenty of movement, plenty plenty of humor, and a whole lot of wisdom behind all of that, even if it's self-effacing wisdom. <laughs> right on. And if, if I can appreciate, too, because I overheard some of the lectures, and my God, you guys are smart. And... I feel so basic. I feel so mother goose, granny goose compared to you guys. You guys are all scholastic and stuff. So thank you for having me. Yeah. No, this, this has been awesome. I think we covered a, a big a big range of topics within healing within Taoism in this conference. Uh, Joseph who might even be here. To say mm. All right. We'll, we'll see if that is indeed who is logging in. Hey, Susu, ni hao, hao jiu bu jian. Sinti hai hao ma, hai zai liang ma. Every now and then I talk Chinese, so you know I'm authentic. Thank you, let's see. Gonna use more mo with my clients. Yeah, Dan, dude, do a whole session more. They are stoked. And then just do part by part. And lower back, hip, thigh, all over the knee, through the calves. Down that spleen line. Oh my, two hour session, just polish. Oh, they're in heaven. I love the five hand techniques. Do we practice in the order you gave us? No. I mean, it's a progression, right? But again, case by case. And so if you get someone who presents really big and strong, you may want to brush less. Right? This might be two nothing for them, right? But if you see someone who's terminally ill, aged, you know, then maybe you want to leave out the padding and the hard polishing, you know, so case by case, right? And uh, in terms of your self-practice, uh, probably practice the one that's most awkward, right? So that it's less awkward and more natural. And then also work on being ambidextrous because when you're a healer, you're going to do a technique on one side of the table and you're going to do the technique on the other side of the table. And oftentimes we could be right or left hand dominant and we'd be more fluent on one side than the other. So in terms of practice, practice it all and practice ambidextrosity. Practice being fluent on both sides. Matt, oops, Andy's over here speaking for Matt. Uh, Matt can ask himself. Uh. Uh, Matt wants to know if there is a practice you do when tight on time, especially fluid in the ankles. Um, yeah, so we have a very simple protocol and it takes a few seconds to do. We actually did it in the course of our hand maintenance routine and it's move, massage, meditate. And so if you're tight on time, uh, you just move a little, right? up, down, front, back, round and round, right? All the possible movements, polish it a little, warm it up, Pat it a little bit, get it red, right? Promote circulation and then meditate a little. Right? And we did that. We moved, we polished and massaged, and then we took a moment to feel the benefit, right? And so that's in a sense, the meditation. So you have move, massage, meditate, and that takes what, a minute. And so if you're ever tight on time, 
move it a little, massage it a little, meditate a little. Right? And as we said earlier, if my pain is here in my elbow, I'm gonna go above my elbow at the shoulder, I'm gonna go below my elbow at the wrist. I'm even gonna do the other elbow and even across at the other knee. So you do above, below, across, and opposite. And then that way, move, massage, meditate. So that's a quick, easy protocol that you use for pain. All right, let's see. Thank you so much for a cognate explanation. I've been doing these actions, but did not know the rationale. Yeah, cool. Thank you, David. I love the five hand techniques. Uh, gonna use more mo. There you go. Mo, mo. All right. I think I saw my uncle. Hey, Susu Niha. Sifanameo. He's not smiling. Very stoic, very, very common. Just down, Zula. Hey. Oh, sorry, sorry. I can't hear you. Hello. Hello. Hey, I welcome you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Ah, this is should be. Ah, sorry. Ah, no problem. You did very well. Very well. I, I, I'm just like you know, it's, it's like a big. Uh, also here, I have a conference. I have a lot of lot of native students here. So just like a speech a little bit. It's okay. I have another conference. I need to write. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah,